Hi everyone, today we are looking at the topic chemical monitoring and management and in today we will look at the first hand investigation flame test. You should perform this investigation in your school. So let's look at what sort of uh, methods we can use to perform the flame test and what results do we expect in our investigation. So our aim of this experiment would be to identify cations using flame tests. Let's look at some background information just to know why this is a useful test to identify cations. So qualitative analysis is concerned with identifying the elements present in a compound or mixture. Make sure, uh, like, um, just note that it's a qualitative analysis and not a quantitative analysis because if it was a quantitative analysis, you would actually measure how much of each ions are present. But because it's quali qualitative analysis, you are actually looking at what an ions are present, not how much of it an ions are present. So if you can uh, distinguish between them, quantitative is the amount, but um, qualitative analysis is just identifying the anions present. So when metal ions are heated in a Bunsen burner flame, the electrons actually gain energy. And because they gain energy, they are stimulated to rise to another uh, orbit. And what happens then? When the electrons fall back down, they have to release that energy. And as they release the energy, they release light of a characteristic color. So what happens is when you provide energy to the electrons, they move from their normal orbit to a higher orbit. They stay there for a while, and when they come back to their normal orbit again, they release the energy they had, and that energy is released as light. And some elements produce specific color of light, which is a, a signature color for that element. So for example, barium will always produce a pale green color, calcium will always produce a brick red color. And this is due to the energy they release. So the energy they release comes out as light and some elements have specific colors of light that they form. Now what sort of materials do we use in this investigation? So the material should be arranged as a circuit just to ensure that there is no cross con contamination and to avoid any impurities in your sample. Also to ensure that the results you get are accurate. So the uh, materials you will use is chlorides of barium, calcium, copper and iron because these are some of the cations that produce specific color, uh, color when they are put onto flame. We also use uh, platinum or nichrome wire loops just to uh, put the sample in the flame. As you can see in the diagram, the person is holding a platinum or nichrome wire and then he, uh, he or she is placing it in the Bunsen burner flame. So this is what platinum and nacre wires are used for. And you also use a watch glass and a, Bunsen, uh, and a Bunsen burner again because you want the flame which is coming out of the Bunsen burner. And you also use hydrochloric acid which will be used as your cleaning agent. So use hydrochloric acid as one of your uh, to clean your uh, nacre wires when you uh, test each of the different samples to see what sort of cations are present. So there are some precautions you need to make sure you know before you perform this um, investigation. First of all, you need to be very careful because you're using very concentrated hydrochloric acid. It's 9 moles per liter and it's very concentrated. And uh, also you need to be careful with copper and barium compounds as they're toxic. Now hydrochloric acid can um, burn your skin. It can also cause irritation to your eye and your respiratory system. So you need to make sure that when you're performing the ex experiment, you're, worn, you're, you're wearing proper gloves, you're wearing um, goggles, safety glasses, so that there is no chance of the concentrated hydro uh, hydrochloric acid to get in touch with your skin or contact your eyes. And also with copper and barium compounds, you need to make sure that you're wearing proper protective clothing for gloves and safety glasses as well because they are toxic and can um, cause injuries or health risks if um, they come in contact. Care should also be taken because uh, so that there is no contamination because you do not want wrong results. You want the so, uh, cations to present uh, the correct uh, flame color. So if there is contamination, your sample might not 
produce the same color that you're after, so you have to make sure that there is no contamination in your results. And you may also need to use different wire for each sample, again because you don't want to contaminate, or you can clean your wire between the tests and you do that using the uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid. Um, so if you uh, put the wire in concentrated hydrochloric acid and then you put it in the flame again, you can actually clean the wire and then you can use it for different metals. So between each of the tests, you need to either clean a wire or you need to use different wires each time just to ensure that your sample is not contaminated and the flame color produced is right. So what is the method? So what you do is you dip platinum on nichrome wire into a watch glass containing hydrochloric acid. And again, please take care because hydrochloric acid is very toxic and corrosive to skin and eye. So make sure you're wearing protective uh, clothing. So as you can see in the um, animation, you take hydrochloric acid and then you put it in your fire just to um, clean your wire at the start to ensure no, not, no contaminants are present in your wire. In the next step, you heat the wire strongly to the flame again to clean it. And then you need to moisten your wire in the acid and then you dip the moistened wire in a solid sample of metal compounds. So if you can see, first you moisten it, you clean it in the flame and then you take the solid sample and then you put it in the flame again. And that's how you will test your metal compound. So if you place, you should make sure that the wire is placed at the edge of the flame, so not in the middle. You want to place it at the edge of the flame if you can see in the animation. And also observe the color. So when you put the metal in your, uh, when you put the metal compound in the Bunsen burner flame, the color of the flame should change, indicating what metal cation is present. And you do that for every single metal. So for every single metal, you can use different wires, or again, you can clean the wire between every single test, just so that you don't contaminate your sample. And yeah, you should repeat, uh, repeat these steps for each of the metal. So every time you take a new metal, you need to clean it and then you need to put it in the metal compound and place it in the flame. So let's look at what sort of results do we expect. So if it's a barium uh, cation, then it, when you put it in a flame, it should show a pale green color as you can see in the animation. If your cation is potassium, if you take it and you put it in the flame, it should produce a purple color. If you have a calcium, and the flame color should be changed to brick red. So whenever, whenever you put your sample in the flame, uh, in, into the Bunsen burner flame and the um, a flame changes to brick red, it will indicate and your result will be a calcium cation. And what happens if it's a sodium? The sodium produces a um, orange, uh, orangish flame color as you can see. And for zinc, you should have a yellow flame color. So when you put the metal, and uh, if, you, if you take the metal and put it in the Bunsen burner flame, and a yellow color is produced, your result will be zinc. So in this investigation, we looked at uh, what different, uh, how we can use flame tests to identify cations, and also how every single cation produces a different uh, types of flame color, which is significant, and the signature color for that particular element. And um, make sure when you're performing this experiment, you are wearing protective clothing because um, hydrochloric acid, uh, copper, and barium compounds are present, which are toxic and can um, be corrosive to your skin and eye. Now let's look at some questions to test your knowledge. Question nine tells us a flame test could be performed to accurately determine the presence of which of the following ions in a compound. So let's look at which of the following ions will produce a distinct, distinct flame color. So A tells us nitrate and it's not nitrate because first of all nitrate is an anion and we can't really use anions for a flame test. We always have to make sure that it's a cation and also nitrate will not produce a distinct flame color. So A is not the answer. What about B? Phosphate. Phosphate is again an anion and we can only use cations for flame test and phosphate again will not produce a distinct flame color if you put it in a Bunsen burner flame. So B is not our answer. And what with C? C again 
it's a platinum it's a metal but again it does not change the flame color so your flame color stays the same so C cannot be your answer again so definitely your answer is D and why is that because when you take a barium cation and put it in a flame it should produce a pale green color and that pale green color indicates that it's a barium cation so barium is the only iron among these four that will produce a distinct flame color and that um, and therefore you can use a flame test to identify a barium cation. Now let's move on to question 10. Question 10 tells us that a flame test could be used to identify which of the following substances. So can we use calcium, chloride, hydroxide or carbonate? Which of these ions can be identified using a flame test? So let's look at our options. So B tells us chloride ions. So chloride ions are again anion and we cannot, uh, anion cannot be used to perform a flame test and also chloride ions do not show a distinct uh, color and again chloride is always uh, present as gas and you will never find it as a liquid or a solid that you can actually put it in a flame test so you can never use chloride ions so B is wrong. What about hydroxide ion? Again hydroxide ions are never uh, present as a uh, liquid or a solid that you would use it in a flame test. Also hydroxide ions are uh, ions are anions and we can only use cations in a flame test. So C is not the answer. What about carbonate ions? Similar carbonate ion is also an anion so we cannot use carbonate ions in flame test. Also carbonate ions do not occur as a metal. So again that will not allow us to use carbonate anions in our flame test. So our answer should be calcium. So calcium, if you can remember, it's Ca2+, and 2 plus indicates that it's a cation. And so we can use calcium ions in a flame test, and it should produce a orange brick red color. So our answer is calcium ions, because when you put calcium ions in a flame test, it should produce a brick red color. This brings us to the end of this investigation. And this in investigation showed us how we can use flame tests to identify different cations. Mm -hmm.